questions. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and dive right on in. We had this question here, sine of log of x. I'll copy it over on a clean sheet here. Um, and uh, any ideas? What'd you guys try? Yeah, Cole, go ahead. Okay, and then... Ah, I see. Did you not do a DV here? Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, so let's try this. All right? Okay, so I'm just doing a straight U substitution here. I'm not doing integration by parts, or at least not yet. Okay, um, so if I do that, then what is dx? It would be x du, right? Just pop it over to the other side. And then here's where we can maybe get fun. If u is natural log of x, what's x? Don't make me get a stick and come around and start beating you over the head. Thank you. All right. So what could I do here? I could write this as sine of u. Um, and then what did I say dx was? x du. But what is x? Yeah, so I could write this as e to the u sine u du. Is that what you did, or did you do something else? Okay, so once I have it to this stage, this should look familiar. Right? Look familiar? Kind of, because that was one of them that we did last time. It was just x instead of u, right? So we could do this like we did last time, which was do integration by parts twice on it. This is the one, one of the examples where you have to do it twice and add the mystery back over to itself and then divide by two, right? So, uh, so in this case, we could stop here and just reuse the work that we had from a minute ago, or from, from last time. Okay, does that make sense, though, that we have done this? Yeah, Cole. Um, okay, yeah, good question. So, so the e to the u d, uh, sine u du, how do I know that I need to do integration by parts twice there? I do because, well, I teach this stuff, and that's sort of a classic example of it. Uh, you guys do now because... I've told you, right? We've, we've run into it. Um, so, you know, part of becoming good at calculus is having a, uh, a sort of memory for, oh, this problem looks sort of like this other one that I remember. Maybe I could adapt something I did before on this other thing. So experience um, is, is maybe the, the best answer there. There he is. Okay. Um, all right. So, so that's one way we could have approached this. Uh, it's not the only way. So Coy sent me a solution that was uh, a little different, which is he went straight into integration by parts. So if we go back to where we started, then um, if we didn't do some sort of substitution at the beginning, then there's really only one choice here. And it's this, right? Um, because do we know what the integral of sine of log x is? No, so we're, we're stuck. Uh, and then du would be cosine of natural log of x times 1 over x dx by the chain rule, and v would be x. All right, so if I write this as uv minus v du, then I would get uv would be x sine of natural log of x minus the integral of v times du. 
Oops. Um, and then what he noticed is what happens to the X's. They cancel. And then we would have to do integration by parts again because this one looks sort of like the previous problem, right? Or the original problem. It's just cosine instead of sine. So we do the substitution again, or the, sorry, the integration by parts again, and we'd have, like before, we'd have to add it back over to itself and, and do it sort of twice. Okay, so, so we've already done it once here. If we did it one more time, we, we'd get it. Um, so uh, the, the point here for, for both approaches is that um, sometimes, and this is the way I, I did it at the, the top, sometimes doing a U substitution first to kind of simplify it a little bit and then doing integration by parts works. That doesn't mean that you can't just launch straight into integration by parts. That also worked here. Um, you got sort of a couple of options, um, but yeah, so that's all. This was, uh, my intended solution was the one at the top because this sort of mixed, uh, if you think about what did we do on, um, well, let's see, what's today, Friday, Monday, didn't we do sort of spicy U substitutions where we were like, let's be evil and think about it backwards, right? This kind of mixed that with integration by parts. Okay, good, Gucci? Huh? No, right. Uh, because we would have to do uh, either the top one, we would just recycle the work that we did last time, or the bottom one, we'd have to do another integration by parts with the coast natural log of X to get it, uh, to finish it off. But, you know, this is a uh, the point where we mathematicians use a, one of our favorite phrases, exercise left to the reader. means that I'm lazy and I'm not doing it and I'm moving on so you can do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the proof is clear. It is left to the reader. So, um, yeah. Uh, okay, good. Let's see. Um, so let's, uh, let's get into how the warm-up go for today. Gucci, Prada. Yeah. You guys uh, starting to remember some of your trig identities? There's only a billion of them to keep track of, right? Um, and I do have a handy-dandy reference sheet that I need to post to Canvas that has some of the common ones on it. Um, so what are sort of the, the, the identities that are going to be useful for, for our purposes here? And let me start with just the ones that involve sine and cosine, okay? So what was one of them that you guys have seen before that involves sine and cosine? John? Yep, so Pythagoras. Excuse me, so we got sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one, and then of course, you could solve that for sine or cosine uh, algebraically, right, and rearrange that equation however you wanted. Um, what other ones involving sine and or cosine are useful? Okay, so I think you guys had a double angle identity that you had to use on the warm-up, right? And uh, here's how I remember that one. I remember these two which are what I what are called power reducing formulas. Okay, so sine squared is one minus cos of two X over two and cosine squared is the same thing, but plus sort of a nice pattern to it. Could I solve either of those two equations for cos of two X? Yes, I could, and so I get another set, which is cos 2x is, um, it'd be 1 minus 2 sine squared x, or uh, 
2 cos squared x minus 1. Same thing. Okay, so uh, they're really the same identity. It's just, or same two identities. It's just which way do you, uh, which side are you kind of interested in? Um, so the first ones uh, there are nice because the powers are going down. And that's especially handy when you're integrating because you want small powers to deal with. Uh, the one on the right, or the two on the right, are useful because they get rid of multiple angles. Um, and, uh, yeah. Okay, does that, that make sense? Uh, what other ones are there that, that might be handy? Yes, John? Yeah, the, double, the, the angle sum and difference identities, which I can never remember which one is which. Uh, but there are identities, and I always just look them up, for sine of x plus or minus y and cosine of x plus or minus y in terms of sine and cosine individually. Um, and like I said, I just look them up because I always forget which one goes where. Is it plus here, minus there, whatever, okay? Um, Dr. Insaldi has kind of a nice, like, mnemonic. She has a, there's some sort of song that she has that goes with it that she learned in school back in the day. And she's told it to me a couple of times, and I don't remember it. So, yeah. Uh, but it's kind of like, you know, there's the quadr... Yes, that is called a prostophyresis identity. So let me actually pull up the, um, um, let me, well, here, let's use the bastion of all knowledge as Western civilization. Um, yes, Safari. Wikipedia. Um, okay, so... Here's the angle sum and difference identities. These two up at the top. Koi was asking me a question on Discord, and Koi, I'll get to that in just a second. So there's the two. Um, it, uh, the sine one, the plus minus goes the same direction. The cosine one, it flops. So this, is, this means that we get to use the relatively uncommon symbol. Well, you guys all know plus minus. Well, there's also the new symbol minus plus. What gives? Okay, there's a reason for that. So if minus plus is always backwards from plus minus, so if this is a plus, that one's a minus, and if that one's a minus, this one's a plus. So it's if the pattern is opposite C, that's why we use the other symbol, not just because we're being evil mathematicians, right? Uh, there's 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 really a good reason for it. Okay, so. Uh, and then the tangents and secants and, and whatnot, okay, those are all kind of arcane. Um, but the other set of identities that Koi is referring to is the sum and product identities, which I know they're in here somewhere. Um, I don't want the Chebyshev or... Uh, here, let me just go up to the top because... Um, our product to sum and sum to product. These are, I think, what Koi was referring to. Um, so these things are sometimes called uh, product to sum formulas or sum to product. The product to sum formula, um, I know them by the name prostophyresis, which is an ancient Greek word, okay, which means an addition or subtraction as appropriate. Um, but it's also a technique for... Um, for doing arithmetic, uh, and it comes in real handy. So if you had two numbers and you wanted to multiply them, multiplication is hard, right? It's tedious. So the method of pros, the virus is you think of, okay, your two numbers as being the cosine of two angles. 
you figure out what those angles are by looking them up in a table. You do the computation on the right-hand side because that's easier. It's just addition or subtraction. And then you scale the, the answer back up. That technique is called pros to fire assist, and it's super handy in like navigational kind of mathematics. Uh, but you could also sort of do the ones at the bottom, the sum to product, or sometimes I've seen referred to as reverse pros to fire assist. Um, and there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, pros to fire assist, though, it sounds kind of like it's a medical condition or something. Like, I'm sorry to inform you, Mr. Borden, that you have pros to fire assist. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. If you want to know more about that, take uh, possibly next semester, I'm not sure yet if I'll be able to teach it, Math 277, Spherical Trigonometry. Yeah, it is. It's the math behind celestial navigation. So if, uh, if I gave you a compass, a sextant, uh, and a slide rule, and a book, could you figure out where you were on the planet? What's in the book? Huh? What's in the book? Okay, fair point, right? Uh, not a map, no. The uh, uh, you, okay. the cell phone, yeah. Sat phone. Uh, no, you'd need a, um, a nautical almanac, for example. Uh, oh, I need to give you a, time, a watch, too. Mm. Uh, a timekeeping device. If I didn't give you the book, and I didn't give you the timekeeping device, uh, you could, and all you had was the sextant, you could tell me where you are in terms of your latitude. Longitude's a little harder. A sextant? It's a thing for measuring angles, but you look through it, and it's got mirrors and stuff on it. So, um, yeah, let me, well, let me just show you a picture. Uh, if I had all of those things, yes. 10 minutes. That is a sexton. Um, yeah. All right, anyway, let's get back to uh, current trigonometry, uh, not spherical stuff. And calculus, uh, I want to be here. Okay. Huh? Oh, a sextant? Yes, you could. You that doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's kind of get to it. Um, so. Um, Let's um, let's say that we had the following integral. Okay, sine cubed of x dx. So what uh, what do you think would be a good idea? Okay, u equals sine x, and then du would be cosine. Do I see any cosines there? Not as written, but could I get them there? Yes. How could I do that? Yeah, a little trig identity, yeah. So let me think of my original integral is really being this, right? Sine cubed is sine squared times sine. And then could I turn some of the sines into cosines or vice versa? Yeah. All right, so in this case, which identity am I using? Yeah, this one is a Pythagorean identity, right? That sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and I just rearranged it in my head, and we have that. Okay, now that we've got it that way, what jumps out of us, out of us to do? Okay, so what do you notice? Pray tell. We could. I wouldn't. 
<laughs> Sorry, Mr. Trap. It was a trap. Actually, I, well, that's what I need to do. I need to get like your face superimposed over the background of a Star Wars movie and then say it's a trap with two Ps. Yeah? Have you ever heard that one? Yeah. You have. Just now. Mm -hmm. That's no moon. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, simpler than that. What about if I just let u equal cosine? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine x dx. Well, I've got the sine and the negative. I can sort that out. That's pretty easy. So at this point, we can just do a u substitution. We don't even need to do integration by parts. And so I just get that, right? Negative uh, 1 minus u squared du. Of course, I could flip the flip that to u squared minus 1. Uh, it's, I've got, you know, double negative going on here. And so this would just be what? u cubed over 3 minus u plus c, which would be uh, cos cubed. That cos cubed over 3 minus cos plus c. Good? Yeah, okay. So the art here is if you have powers of sine, cosine, or if they're mixed, okay, is to try to, if possible, peel off something and save it as du and make the rest a bunch of stuff in terms of u. Okay. Uh, that's kind of what we did here. Uh, is this the only way to do this problem? Probably not. Um, I'm not sure I would have tried integration by parts, because if I did that, what would I have made u and what would I have made dv? Well, we would have possibly gotten ourselves into some trouble that way. Um, anyway. Um, okay, good. Let's... Um, the uh, let's let's sort of look at um, another um, variation of this, um, which is um, let's say that I've got this. Okay. Cos cubed x sine squared x dx. Okay, so what I have here is um, one um, something where the power on the cosine or the sine from the previous example uh, is an odd number. Okay, the oddness is actually going to be really useful because. I can think of an odd number as being an even number plus or minus one, okay? And the reason I want to think of the plus or minus one is if I take an odd power, like we did in, the, in this previous example, what did we do with sine cubed? We thought about it as sine squared times sine, and then we converted the one that had the even power, the sine squared, right? The odd leftover we used as our du. Does that make sense? Okay, so here, what should we use as our odd leftover? Yeah, the cosine is what we need to, to mess with. Um, and the sine is already even, so we'll leave him alone. Okay, so what about if I first write this as cos squared times sine squared times cos, like that. And then what I want to do is save that part for du and then the other stuff make it something that involves u. 
And I, ha I don't know what U is yet, but if du is going to be cos dx, what would u have been? Sine. Okay. So I want to make u equal to sine here, and that's fine. I've got sine squared, so that would be u squared. But what am I going to do with the cos squared? Can I turn cos squared into sine squared? Yes. Using that identity, right? Okay, so now I have everything sort of set up where I can do a substitution, right? We've saved the lone cosine to be our du. In the previous problem, we'd saved the lone sine to be the du, but sine and cosine kind of work the same way, right? I mean, other than that pesky minus sign, they're, you know, calculus-wise, basically identical. Um, and so... I've got du at the end of that, right? And so what's the rest of it in terms of u? How would I write that? 1 minus u squared times u squared du. And of course, I could go ahead and distribute this out like so. Okay. And once I've got it there, it's easy because we just have a polynomial. Okay, Gucci, Uprada. Oui, no. Monsieur Michalski, uh, vous comprenez? Ah. Uh, Professor Gelman. A parle, a parle que vous parlez français. Mm. Et donc ça, je parle français avec vous. Okay, so, huh? Ah. Well. I said Professor Gelman told me that he spoke French, and because of that, I'm going to speak French with him. So, hmm? well, Alex is fluent, right? His French is like très magnifique. Uh, my French sucks in comparison, but. Okay, so we integrate u, th u cubed over 3 minus u to the fifth over 5, and then just substitute u back in. But you guys can, you guys can handle that step on your own. Okay. All right, so the salient point here is when you've got one of them being an odd number, the exponent, then, um, and I say one of them meaning the, the power of the sine or the power of the cosine, there might only be cosines or sines, right? But they could also, like this, be mixed, in, uh, mixed up. Then what you want to do is you want to peel off uh, one of the sort of odd leftovers to be your du, okay? Now, what about if both powers were odd? Could we have still played this trick? Sure. If both powers were odd, so like let's say for example this was um, uh, cos cubed times sine instead of sine squared, then this part right here, what would have this been? Well, we'd have 1 minus sine squared there, but then just a sine left over, right? And so instead of it being a u squared right there, it just would have been a u instead. Right. So as long as one of the two powers is odd, we're we're in good shape. Yes. OK. So what about if that doesn't happen, if they're not both odd? 
pack up and go home, okay? So what happens if they're both even? Then this trick doesn't work because there's not an odd leftover to use, okay? Well, in order to build this up, let's start with, let's suppose that we just had sine squared x as the thing we wanted to integrate. That's an example where both powers are even because I'm thinking of the cosine power as being zero. It's not there. Okay. Uh, now, equivalently, I could do this exact question with the integral of cosine squared. Um, same difference in a sense, right? So what's the technique that I can want to use here? Which identity do I not want to use? Yeah, the Pythagorean identity isn't going to help here because all that's going to do is turn this thing into the integral of cosine squared instead. And I don't know that any more than I know the one that's on the board at the moment. Okay, so what's a different identity that we could use here? Yeah, the double angle identity. This is where that's really handy or what I called the power reducing identity earlier. So this is the same as... Oops, sorry, there should be a two right there. This. Okay, why is that useful here? Well, let me rewrite this integral just slightly. Okay, what have I done to my sine squared term? The power was the problem, right? And so I've reduced the power by means of this identity. Can I integrate cosine of 2x? Yes, I don't need any fancy schmancy stuff to do that, okay? And then, of course, integrating 1 half is easy. So what does this come out to? It comes out to that. Why is it one quarter? This, yeah, okay. So what did I really just technically do right there? I did a very simple u substitution of u equals 2x. Okay, but like I told you guys last week, that kind of simple u substitution where it's just a constant ought to be happening automatically by the end of the week. Oh, it is the end of the week. Huh? Yeah. Maybe the end of next week. How about that? Wait, so what, what is it that you did with this one? Well, so if I had this, I would say u equals 2x, du is 2dx, and so dx is 1 half du, but there was already a 1 half there, so that became a 1 quarter, okay. right? Okay, so, um, yeah. Now, could, would the same sort of approach have worked if this had been cosine squared instead of sine squared? Similar uh, identity, what would the only difference have been if this had been cosine squared at the beginning, then uh, at the answer end, what would have happened to the minus? It would have flipped plus. That's it. Okay, so... The two identities we've used are, let me just go back to my list here to recap. Um, we just used this, this set right there, right? We used the, the one at the top for the problem that we were dealing with, and then the one at the bottom would have been sort of similar, okay? Okay, does that make sense? We? Oui? Okay, so what about if I start to become really evil here? and say, all right, well, you know what, just for giggles, let me flip this to cosine this time. Sine squared, that's too easy. Let's do cosine to the fourth. Well, what are we going to do? Mr. Borden, brilliant idea. No? 
How else can I think of cosine to the fourth? Right. I could think of it like this. Yes? Because last time I checked, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. I know that's real, a real uh, deep observation. Okay, but why is this a good idea? That perhaps remains to be seen. But in particular, in the inside, do I know how to deal with cos squared? Do I have an identity or that might be useful there? Which one? All right, the opposite of what we did last time. Okay, so here I'm going to rewrite the cos squared using its power-reducing identity. Like that. Okay, so I just replaced, and it's a plus this time because I got cos squared, right? That's the, the nice pattern to it. And then all of that stuff is squared. Could I foil that out? Distribute it and multiply it all out? Yeah, does it seem like a good idea? Huh? It doesn't seem like a good idea, but it is. It's going to be a messy idea, right? Because if I foil this stuff out, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get one quarter plus one half cos 2x plus one quarter cos squared of 2x. Okay, so take a minute and make sure that I foiled it out correctly. I've had enough coffee that I'm pretty sure that I have. Mr. Borden, why is it one half in the middle and not one quarter? And I'm not trying to pick on you too much today. Instead of one quarter in the middle term. Well, okay, when you foil it, right, you got to do first outer inner last. Well, the outer pair and the inner pair are the same thing. And so I have two of them. Bingo. Right. Because <laughs> four plus four is two. <laughs> yeah, nine out of five Americans are bad at fractions. Yeah. Actually, that's what I think every time. Um, have you guys ever been up to like Lafayette or I'm sure they're elsewhere in the state, but there's a bank called Fifth Third Bank. And I'm sorry, but I, I, I just think a bank that's using improper fractions as its name is probably, I'm not sure I would trust them to handle my money. Uh, okay, that would make sense, but you know, that it was at the intersection of fifth and third, but they used the fraction five over three as their logo. Like this is just, the, yeah, no. Um, uh, yeah, it's because it's called a semicircle. And <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, all right. So we've got all that done. Now, can we jump in and integrate this? Well, two of the three terms we could, right? The first term, integral of one quarter, that's easy. And then integral of one half cos 2x, we could do that. But then we come to the last term, which is one quarter cos squared of 2x. What are we going to do there? I don't know what the integral of cos squared is. But do we have a trick for that? Sadly. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is do the same trick again. All right. Here's where we're going to really use our noodles. All right. I'll go ahead and not integrate yet. Hmm? 
Yes. Yeah, the, the noodle that, yeah. Okay, so what I've done is I've just kind of grouped everything. And what I want to do is I want to rewrite cos squared of 2x. Now, do I have an identity that will take cos squared and get rid of the power? Yes, I do. Okay. I do have such an identity. And what is it? I'm going to have 1 plus, ah, 4x. Aha, uh -huh, good. Okay, why is it 4x and not 2x here? Double, double the identity. Exactly. Okay, so what's the identity that we've really just used here? So let me kind of sketch this out over here on the side in green. I just used cos squared of x is 1 plus cos of 2x all over 2. And so if I replace x with 2x, what's 2 times 2? 4, right? Um, my handwriting is atrocious. I apologize. Okay. So do, are we convinced that, that it really should be 4x here, not 2x? Because really what it was, it was twice the previous angle. The previous angle was itself 2x, so twice 2x is 4x. Yes? Isn't that evil? Yeah? Oh, it's, this is great. Okay, now we've got a big old pile of messy algebra that we better sort out. So let's distribute that one quarter and hopefully not screw this up. So what are we going to have? Oops, let me go back to... We'll have one quarter plus one half cos 2x plus one eighth plus one eighth cos 4x dx. Okay, did I get everybody accounted for? We, hopefully. And yes, of course, we could buddy up the one quarter and the one eighth, and we'll do that in a minute. But uh, the other two terms we, we can't do anything with, at least not yet. Um, okay, so what's one quarter plus one eighth? Speaking of fractions, three eighths. And then we're ready to integrate, okay? Because at this stage, we now have gotten rid of any powers of cosine. All we have are double or quadruple angles, right? So there's no more powers. Okay, is that okay? Yes? All right, so now what? Well, what's the integral of 3 eighths? That's easy. Oh, no, I just forgot to write it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, they'll just hire anybody to teach math here at Wabash, right? It's really terrible. Yeah. Really terrible. Hmm? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was so glad I got this job because... Uh, I kind of struck out on the market that year. This is the only interview, like on-campus interview I had, and I probably would have had to move back home to my, with my parents if I didn't get this job. Yeah. So needless to say, they were thrilled. Um, yeah. No. Uh, but no, I got the job and been very happy here doing things I would never have imagined I was doing. 10 years ago. All right, so what's the integral of 3 eighths? 3 eighths x, okay, that's easy. 1 half cos of 2x becomes 1 quarter sine of 2x, like before. Okay, so I did sort of an implicit u substitution. 
Okay, and then just to keep ourselves on our toes, what's the cosine four x one going to become? One thirty second sine of four x, and then of course we'll have our plus c. Why is it one thirty second? Because eight times four is thirty two, right? So we had a one eighth out front. Another factor of one quarter pops out from the sort of chain rule business, and so we get one thirty second. And there we go. Okay, so what's the moral of the story here? If we have even powers of cosine or sine only, then we have to use these identities in order to um, reduce the powers down. And we might have to use those identities multiple times, and it turns into sort of an unholy mess of algebra. Okay. So this was cosine to the fourth. What about if I had done cosine to the eighth? This would have gotten kind of messy, right? Uh, or I had, let's say I had like sine squared times cosine squared. Well, then this would have also been rather messy, okay? But it's all going to come down to repeated applications of um, those two identities. Okay, because notice that when we did that here, we used one of those identities, the cos uh, one, we actually used it twice. One for cos squared of x, and then the second time for cos squared of 2x. Okay, so sort of we had to just do this process over and over again. The bigger the powers get, the worse this gets, because the algebra gets messier. Uh, but it's sort of the same idea, it's just more of it. Okay. Um, all right, so does that make sense? Um, now, there is actually another way that we could have done the, so we started as an example with that problem, right, sine squared. And we used the power reducing identity to get it. But there's another way, which is, let me actually think of this one. As sine x times sine x, and then do integration by parts. Okay, so um, if I did that, then what do I get? I'd have uv minus the integral of v du. And it looks like we're stuck. But could we have done this process again? Right, so doesn't this sort of look familiar in the sense that, oh, integral of cosine squared is like the integral of sine squared. Could I do the problem again and then add back to the other side? Okay, maybe, yeah. So. Why don't you guys, for, for next time, carry a, finish this process, okay? So try the sine squared integral, but using integration by parts rather than the other method that we did. And then what I want you to also think about is to convince yourself that the two answers are the same. Okay, they ought to be, right? Um, so think about that, okay? Um, the other thing that we could do here is uh, we've done all this stuff with sines and cosines. Could we have done it with tangents and secants also? Similar idea, okay. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll spend a, a few minutes at the beginning uh, on Monday kind of recapping over that. Okay, uh, and I will have your all's quiz things for you. I didn't quite get to finished them last night, so um, I will get those to you ASAP. Okay. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, kill the stream here, Koi and Farden and uh, um, Ben, I think hopefully you're on, on today. I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend and uh, pay attention to Canvas for further details. See you guys later.